All right, everybody, welcome back to Digital Marketers Social Media Marketing Certification. And this is lesson two. We are gonna be covering social listening in this lesson. And let's just review really quickly what we are talking about when we talk about the social success cycle and the definitions of that. So remember, in this quadrant, we've got social listening and that is you know your whole listening program it's it's listening for mentions both positive and negative about your brand uh, the key me the key members of your organization your products things like that on the social web you've got social influencing which is the uh, spreading of you know valuable content around the web that builds trust and authority for you and your organization you've got social networking which is about finding authority figures and colleagues and so forth that could do uh, partnerships with you or earn you media mentions and then you've got social selling which is just generating leads and sales from the social web now in this uh, lesson we are going to be taking a deep dive on the social listening uh, part of the social success cycle. And remember, this could be uh, a single individual that all they do all day long, depending on the size of your organization. You know, again, when I worked for salesforce.com, you know, we had six people that were on uh, all day long on social listening tools, just monitoring all the mentions of salesforce.com and its principal uh, products and the principal individuals like the CEO. Um, you know, listening and responding to those uh, mentions, whether they were praise or criticism. So, uh, on the other hand, you might be a solo entrepreneur who works um, and, and runs everything, you know, their self and their business. And so you're doing all four of these things plus, you know, fulfilling products and doing customer service and <clears throat> everything else that's involved in running a business. It's all the same though, you know, the concepts that we're going to cover today are, are, are all going to apply uh, whether you are a solo entrepreneur or working for a uh, Fortune 100 company. So let's jump in here and let's talk about the fact that, um, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can fail at social media. You know, we, we all at, at certain times, you know, have, have, felt like we've been sort of dragged into social media uh, because, you know, social media has kind of happened to us as business people. You know, it, it's something that we cannot ignore and we know that. Um, and um, some companies have, have resisted uh, social media, sort of been dragged into it. Uh, and they figured out that there's all kinds of different ways to fail at it, right? They, they, they've tested this and they've tested that. Um, you know, you take a look at some of these epic fails where you've got this, this uh, employee at Taco Bell uh, licking tacos and putting it out there on Facebook. So here's another example with the American Red Cross where, um, you know, one of their employees in, obviously in, that had control over their social media accounts accidentally posted something that he you know clearly uh, meant to to post to his personal profile and actually ends up posting it to the american red cross major fail right uh, major catastrophe for the red cross to have this posted to their account obviously but you know there are a lot of ways absolutely to fail in in, in social media and a lot of them um, end up embarrassing brands or embarrassing the principal members of those brands or those companies. But there is no bigger failure in social media than to just not be answering the telephone, right? And that's what I meant when I was saying that, you know, we've all been sort of dragged into social media, whether we like it or not. These conversations are going on. It's as if, you know, brands that are not participating, it's as if someone has come in and installed a tele uh, telephone in their customer service department and they're not answering it. Okay, the phone is ringing and, the, and they're not answering that telephone. You know, so the, the biggest failure that you could be making as an organization or as a solopreneur is just to not be answering the social telephone at all, all right? And you know, you see, you see some examples of this here. Um, where, you know, here in, with Toyota, you've got 
um, you know, somebody complaining on their fa on the Toyota Facebook page <coughs> of deceptive practices in advertising, and you see Toyota come in here and actually answer the telephone, right? So you see Toyota come in and say, look, uh, we're, we're sorry that, that uh, this Toyota dealer uh, used um, deceptive advertising practices in your opinion, and you know, let, here's what we're gonna do about that. All right, now you do still see brands here in, you know, even in, in, in the 2015 that are not answering the social telephone and that is the biggest fail. Uh, fail. Now, even, you know, another example here on the right where you've got uh, somebody uh, tweeting to Birchbox that, you know, this is more of a, uh, hey, good job, good pat on the back. And, um, you know, again, as Birchbox here uh, being praised here, you would want to answer that and say, hey, you know, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the shout out or, or whatever the um, makes sense for your brand. And then, you know, also here down on the, on, in the bottom right where you've got Ren Kitchens, you know, they, they plan uh, incorrect, uh, their plans were incorrect, and then the store staff speaking to me poorly, you know, um, you know, and they even literally put the word fail in there. And the problem with this particular tweet was that it was it, it went unanswered. Okay, it was not answered by Ren Kitchens. It was just something that went out there. The telephone was ringing, and they didn't pick it up. You know, and, and, and when we think about you know complaints and praise and things like that, we generally think about things like uh, Twitter and Facebook. As, as being the general areas where we find these kinds of mentions. But the truth is that people are talking about your brands on all kinds of channels, like these unboxing uh, uh, videos that have become so popular on YouTube where you know, you've got this person unboxing, they're, they're, at, they're, they're so excited about this knife that they've ordered that they actually shot a, a, a 19 minute video that actually has 53,000 views of them opening up and unboxing a, a, a pocket knife, right? And these are the kinds of things that your organization needs to be aware of, needs to be listening for on the social web. You know, over here, uh, we've got, you know, reviews that, that come out on things like Yelp and, uh, you know, Google uh, Maps and, you know, all kinds of, of review sites, Amazon, you know, it just depends on what you are selling, um, that there are people talking about you in multiple channels. And that's why, you know, later on in this, in this section, we're going to show you how to set up listening so that you can hear these conversations going around on the social web. So, you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is that listening is an expectation at this point in, you know, in your digital strategy. Your clients, your prospects, your customers expect your company to be listening at the very least on social media. And that's why when it comes to the social success cycle, you've got listening as, the, as really the foundation of all of this. If you're going to just get started with social media, you should start with listening for a whole lot of reasons um, and that we will get to in, in just a second. But if you jump in and just start uh, selling right away or try to just jump in and start networking on the social web, you're really sort of putting the cart before the horse. You know, it's, it's start with listening, it's the most expected activity for you to be doing is to be using social media as a as the customer service channel that it already is for you and your brand and answering that social telephone and then you can start layering on more and more uh, responsibilities uh, to to that individual that's that's working on your social media or whether it's you or or whatever this is where we start with monitoring and responding our reputation and just listening and responding the way that you would in any customer service channel. All right. The other reason we start with listening is because it's just foundational. You know, it, it informs the other stages of social media. It informs your social influencing, right? What content should we create? You're going to be 
uh, listening and, and understanding, and we'll talk more about the feedback loops that you create during the listening stage to inform your content team of the di different types of content that need to be created. Uh, it informs your networking, right? So you are able to find the journalists and the other organizations that you need to be partnering with and other people that can give you media mentions and earn those media mentions through your listening program, you will find the people that you need to be networking with. And it also informs your selling, right? So um, how do, you know, what do people respond to? Um, what do people need? What are people asking for on the social web? Your listening program can tell you all of those things. So that's why in the social success cycle, we start with social listening and it informs the rest of our activity on social media. All right, so in the next video, we're actually gonna jump in and we're gonna take a real good look at how we are gonna set up the goals for our social listening. We'll see you in the next video.